Hey, thanks very much, and uh, welcome back, Alex. This is an interesting one going up against uh, a young kid in Chase Hooper. You were pretty young yourself when you entered the UFC, and uh, you know I've been competing for a couple of years. Can you kind of relate to where he is in his career right now, and does that help you in any way going into this? Um, I haven't really given that much thought. Um, I don't believe um, age has anything to do with it. Um, he's nine and zero, so he definitely he definitely has cage experience. You know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm not sure that. Uh, Pipe jitters might be a factor. I never really try to look for any of those small types of advantages, you know. Um, I'm just going to solely rely on the skill and the experience that I have in order to come out on top in this fight. But other than that, um, being young or being inexperienced, it might play a factor, but you know, I'm not in his head, so I can't relate to what he might be going through. What are your thoughts about uh, fighting in the empty venue? Because uh, we've heard a lot of things like fighters can hear, you know, the commentators and, uh, you know, the lack of crowd. Sometimes that's a motivating factor. What's your take on it? Uh, if it's, I feel like it might be like the fights in Japan, to be honest with you. The crowd is completely silent during the fight, so I can hear the commentators and you can hear everybody talking. You can even hear your opponent breathe. That's how quiet it gets in those stadiums, so... I think it might be similar to that, and I'm not um, put off by no crowd. I'm I actually been liking the way things have been going on this fight week with uh, not so much um, public interference. Um, we were just making it about the fight and focusing on the fight. And quite honestly, I believe fighting in front of no crowd with just your coaches there and stuff, it might just feel like a glorified sparring match. Interesting. What's uh, what's fight week been like uh, as well? Because obviously you're uh, a little more confined than usual, I guess. That's uh, been nice, you know, just focusing on the fight and training. Uh, it's it's like a, I guess, fight camp or just training every day. Though what I usually do, I'm not too much of a um, public person. If anything, I keep to myself. I stay home. I chill and train, and you know, I go out sparingly. But other than that, I'm. It hasn't been too much of a hassle. It's been a very easy weight cut as well. So uh, I've been feeling good. Good to hear. And last one for me. I mean, you've been in the UFC for so long now. It kind of feels like you're one of those guys who's experienced everything. But the last few months, and especially even the past week in America, has been just unprecedented times. Uh, just give us your thoughts on that. And, you know, have you been able to maintain your focus on the goal ahead with everything that's going on? Well, definitely. The... The fight comes first, the art comes first for me, so I have been able to maintain focus. But I've always, I always keep an eye on the, I guess, the social uproars and all the stuff that's going on in America. It's not ever outside of my um, mind sight. I know that this has been going on. It's nothing new to me. It's been going on, and, and I personally experience um, such things like racism and, and those kind of things. So I know it's prevalent in America, and it's always there. We're just videotaping more of it quite honestly, because we've got better cameras and phones and everybody is documenting these things going down. So I do believe that it is a problem and it has been a problem for many, many years. And I think the way, um, especially the minority communities, um, has to look into solving them is really changing the way they think, changing the way they treat each other as well as um, their communities instead of relying on somebody else outside of your community to maintain and um, make your community progress you have to take that responsibility upon yourself. But a lot of us in America in general, we just think that all because it's not our responsibility to end a task, we devoid ourselves from any responsibility of beginning it. And I, I appreciate your candor there. And I know you, you said you'd experienced uh, some yourself. Would you mind sharing, and, and you totally don't have to, but would you mind sharing some of those experiences? Well, yeah. Um, well, growing up in, uh, I, 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 will, I, I grew up in a, in, in a bad neighborhood, and then we moved to the suburbs a little bit later, and then um, just that itself, I experienced um, it very difficult for me when I was younger to like uh, talk to people or connect with people because they saw me in one way, and many often more and oftentimes, you know, like they'll say stuff like, you know, uh, like they can't accept the way your hair is or. Um, or you're ugly because you have dark skin. So it really caused an identity crisis for me. And I'm sure a lot of people of um, um, darker pigments um, growing up. But besides that point, there are some even more crazier situations. Like I remember when I was in high school, I had a Honda Civic. 
I blew out a tire, and I had, um, and I think the engine just shut off, so I had to go push it home. And as I was pushing the car home, you know, on the side, on the shoulder of the road, I'm pushing the car home. A cop comes and screeches right behind me to a screeching stop, jumps out the car, gun already drawn, pointing it at me and barking orders. And then what I could make out was he wanted to see my ID. So my ID's in the car. So I'm like, I'm going to go get my ID. The minute I stop pushing the car to grab my ID, he clicks the trigger back, you know, and just like, don't move. And I'm like, oh, fuck this shit. I'm going to get on the ground and I'm not going to do anything. You can grab my ID if you want. But more than that, more than one occasion, situations like that has happened to me. So it's, I lose a lot of faith in the people that are supposedly there to protect you. I feel threatened when a cop pulls up around me or when they're near me because I know how situations can escalate for no reason. Absolutely. Um, I remember being in a concert in, in, a, in another high school and I got into an argument with a security guard there because he tried to physically manhandle me and was not successful. Therefore, when I was walking back um, out of the school because I'm trying to avoid the conflict, a police officer just jumps from behind me and puts me in a chokehold and tries to bring me down. I defended myself and he starts screaming, I'm a cop, I'm a cop. Like, and then we, they brought us into the whole principal's office and thank God the superintendent and the counselor there was on my side and said, well, you can't just do that to people because people are going to react in that way. You can't treat people that way. We can't expect people to walk around completely docile. You know, we're human beings and we all are entitled to our own freedoms. And my freedom ends where yours begins. So we should stop trying to approach on people's freedoms that way. We can't treat people like they're cannon fodder, I should say. <laughs> Yeah, man, that's wild. I really appreciate you you sharing that with us, and uh, best of luck on Saturday. Thank you very much. And we will take the next question from Mike Heck with MMA Fighting. Actually, I forgot to put my hand down. I'm sorry. (laughs) You're fine. Thank you, Mike. We will instead take our next question from Danny Segura with MMA Junkie. Hey, Alex, how's it going? It's been a, a little bit since we've talked. Um, the last time we spoke, you told me you were relocating to South Florida. So how did that go? How did that process go? And how was your training camp this time around since, you know, you have a new home? Um, the process went well. Um, still still looking for a new place because I did get a house, but I am looking for some land. So I might move a little bit further south or north, depending on where I find the best deal. But the training camp went perfectly. We didn't closed down for the pandemic, at least not for the professional fighters. So we were able to maintain a solid and complete training camp for this fight. Yeah. Where did you train and were you able to bring anyone from the MMA lab to South Florida? Oh, no, I I wasn't able to. And quite honestly, the reason for that is I just totally forgot. And, (laughs) (laughs) but other than that, I still have their love and support. And, you know, they're texting me every day and we're talking and stuff. And, you know, they're picking... I guess they're picking apart the fights and whatnot and giving me their insight on it. So we still have a close relationship, but um, no, I don't have anybody from the lab coming out to my corner. I tried to get Ben out here. He has his hands full with three kids already. So Yeah, that's for sure. And um, when we spoke, you told me you needed some time off to sort of just, um, you know, figure things out, sort of life outside of the cage. Um, yeah, now that you're like just a couple of days away from, from the actual fight, is it nice to be on, on fight week? Cause you, you haven't fought in, in almost a year. How, how's that feeling like to sort of be back, uh, in fighting? Well, it feels great. You know, um, it feels good. It feels good. The time off was necessary. I tried to come back a little earlier, but, um, some fights fell through and then this whole virus thing happened and then we couldn't. So I, w- I was a little bit out longer than I wanted to be, but other than that, I feel completely happy and to be back inside this um, fight game again. And I'm excited to showcase my skills. I feel like I've improved a lot on a lot of places that I needed to improve on. And I'm quite ready. Yeah. And um, you're, you're one of the fighters that, that sees yourself, you know, not really as a fighter, but as a martial artist. Is it nice to have this uh, Chase Hooper matchup? Because, you know, it, you're kind of testing your skills with the new generation, with, with, with sort of the, the new kids that are coming up and, and bringing sort of new techniques and new ideas to the game. Well, yeah, it, it won't be my first time fighting the newcomers into the game or the young guys and stuff. Um, I, I feel like I tend to have a, a few fights like that. So um, uh, I haven't really thought about that per se, but other than that, um, 
I feel good going into the fight. I'm not, I'm not worried. If anything, I know that, you know, with the way things are, with the way things have gone with my record and, and um, my, my career in running, um, I know that I'm somewhat of a gatekeeper at this moment and I will accept my position, but I won't be satisfied with it. I am trying to push further every single day, but I know where I'm at right now in the standpoints, especially when it comes to rankings and I guess what everybody else sees but I know what I'm capable of. So um, for me, it's a, yeah, like you said, it's a good proving ground. Yeah. That's interesting. A lot of fighters might not like admit that as far as like feeling maybe like they're gatekeepers. Um, what do you think, you know, since you want to break out of that, what do you think it will take to sort of get out of that label? Well, definitely I got to win fights, you know, that's, that, that's definitely the major thing. And I think it's probably the only factor I, I have to put together victories in my fights, you know, and, being exciting, it comes with who I am, so I don't have to try to do that. All I got to do is just try and put together victories. Um, but other than that, even victories or no victories, I feel like in every fight that I step into and every time I step into the cage, once again, we do see improvement. We do see, even, and it's hard for me to see it after the fight, you know, because we're always down and out if I do lose, but I do see improvement. I do see my game um, getting better. And wholeheartedly, my ultimate goal is to improve myself every single day. Um, of course, it would be nice to try and win as many fights as I can and put my name out there, and get the title, you know, become a contender, get on the top five ranking spots. That's a beautiful thing. And I know it comes with the hard work and trying to be better every day. So I just have to continue that journey. And um, whatever happens will happen. But at the end of the day, I'm a martial artist, and I just want to fight. Um, everything else is extra. I can take those gifts and rewards and at the same time relinquish them because there's nothing more than you're actually getting in there and testing your abilities with the best in the world. Yeah, for sure. And and you mentioned that you were looking to buy some land. You're finally going to set up the farm? Well, yeah, garden. Well, I have like many farms in the backyards of, the, of both houses that I have right now. So just, I have like over 20 fruit trees in one of my backyards. So I always love growing and planting stuff. But yeah, when I do get the land, I definitely want to um, grow in a larger scale as well as set up my um, dojo there and my wife wants to set up her uh, wellness center there so we kind of go into business together. I train and work people out. She'll heal them because she just finished um, studying. I'm mean, getting her degree in naturopathic medicine. So we're thinking about doing something like that. I'm trying to develop a new way of living, I guess, that is more sustainable for each of us as well as the earth so that we can stop thinking that life is just this way, you know, that we just got to get up and work for somebody else or that we got to take pills in order to um, thrive and all that kind of, just the BS of it all. You know, we live, we're, we're accepting mediocrity as life. And for me, as far as I know it, I've never seen somebody that died and came back. So we don't know if we got more lives ahead of us. I only have this one. So why am I going to live a life of mediocrity? I'm going to, take the chance and fail if I have to, then rather sit there and do nothing because I'm afraid to even try. For sure, man. All right, man. We're looking forward to the fight and best of luck with the farm. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you, Alex. That is all the time we had for you, sir. You are good to go. Thank you.